So it's 2023 and you're thinking about buying a tape player. Maybe you have some old cassettes lying around that you want to listen to again. Maybe you're a new player looking to experience ferromagnetic analog sound for the first time. Or maybe just someone who likes to possess actual physical media. Whether if you're a new player or a well-seasoned cassette compadre, here's a couple reasons why you might want to buy used instead of new. So the first reason why I think it might be a smart idea to actually go used as opposed to new when you're buying a cassette deck is the tape deck mechanism. Now, this might not actually be price-wise, but generally speaking, an older mechanism is going to be much better. Now, this right here is, I believe, a Tenetian mechanism. Techmon talks about this a lot, and... um something with this little spring is what gives it off but a lot of them have you know obviously the same components uh doing the same things this is just kind of a, a cheaper one this came out of a magnavox and as you can see it has a, a mabuchi motor so it's pretty good i hear i guess they're being replicated and faked a lot nowadays now if you remember this sony this is one of the very first kind of very primitive uh cassette recorders I think it was one of the first cassette recorders. But, um, so this has a pretty standard uh, tape deck mechanism. But, again, it's much higher and better quality than anything that they're making now. Because they don't really make tape deck mechanisms other than that one Tenetian brand. I think it's called. I'm probably butchering that. Forgive me if I am. So, and maybe we'll go ahead and run through actually what the tape mech does. So, as you see here, there's a lot of components. We'll start out with the front here. This is your playhead. This is what collects the information from the ferromagnetic tape going across and actually makes a signal out of it and sends it back to your amplifier. This is your erase head. Now this, as you can tell, because it swings down out of the way, that means it is a permanent erase head. And it's not really as favorable as something like this, even this, you know, primitive old Sony has a standard, I believe it's called an AC, but as you see, no matter what, even when you're not in record, that head comes up with it. That is the erase head. And now we are talking about the Philips Compact Cassette, which is the proper name for a tape, or for a cassette tape. And part of, you know, their thing in doing that, there was a lot of tape formats before this, but um, one thing that kind of is special to them is the tape head actually moves up to meet the tape. And then you have the pinch roller uh, pinch in between the cap stand. So I had pause on, so that's why the cap stand didn't go up. So here you see the pinch roller gets pushed up against the cap stand. And the playhead also rises up to meet the tape. Now, I feel like one of the negative things of having a permanent erase head is... I feel like sometimes this can kind of get caught, you know, maybe get dirt down in there and stuff. And uh, therefore, you have your tape going right by your erase head and uh, can mess up your tape. Kind of hard to see, but there's a tiny little spring down there that actually holds that erase head down. As well as this spring right here, which holds the whole mechanism down. Going around to the back, we can see the motor, the flywheel, and then the wheel for the mechanism itself. There's usually two belts, one going from the motor to the cap stand and then cap stand to there. Uh, pretty much standard for a lot of these. If we look at something like this old Walkman style uh, Wilson, you can see here that there actually is no erase head on this one. But one thing it does have, automatic stop. So now number two why I think buying used is good, and that is the price. Mainly going into thrift shops and stuff like that. Uh, maybe buying off of Facebook Marketplace, stuff like that. What that allows you to do is you can actually, for very cheap, you know, kind of break them apart and uh, learn to fix them. You can get something like this bag of belts, which I think I paid $10 for. And, uh, you know, it's very, it's a complicated little uh, mechanism, but... It's not too bad to figure out. The ultimate goal 
for me and for anyone is to, you know, actually find a holy grail. A nice, good, old, vintage, maybe direct drive. Doesn't necessarily have to be direct drive, but something with a better mechanism than anything you're going to find here. I'm actually looking for a very, very nice deck that I can integrate into my hi-fi, my main hi-fi, my main stereo. And, you know, something, a Nakamichi Dragon would be amazing, but I'm not shooting that high. You know, just something well-made, something that kind of matches my system. But in the meantime, I have a lot of tapes that, you know, I like to play and I want to listen to. And unfortunately, like I've mentioned, these are mono. So what I did was I went and got, now this is a Philips, who actually made the compact cassette. And this has a headphone out. It doesn't have to necessarily be a line out, but what I'm going to do with that, what that allows me to do is I can actually put a 3.5 millimeter to RCA adapter and then go ahead and plug that into my hi-fi for the time being it will come through in stereo and this is actually not too bad of a cassette depth mechanism in here this is from 1997 so you're kind of on the side to where you know things can still maybe be greased you know it's over 25 years old but you got to worry about cogs being greased belts disintegrating belt stretching um if it's kind of left in the play position for the longest time and you know you don't really realize it then what happens then is say say it's in play and if your pinch roller you know has enough to go up in there and change in temperatures and things like that you'll get a little kind of indent on that and that can just totally mess up your tape player it'll give you wow and flutter it'll be uneven so this one actually turned out to be pretty good. So what we're going to go ahead and do for the second part of this video is I'm going to go ahead and show you how to go about checking a cassette player and see if it's going to be able to work for you. And also, like always, I'm going to show you the one main thing that you usually need to do to get really any kind of a little boombox or stereo or something like this working that isn't giving you sound. So for the people out there maybe looking for something at the thrift store or something cheaper, kind of just more entry level, want to check it out, just remember, now this is from the mid-80s, this is from the early 70s. Something like these two machines are going to have a better tape deck mechanism, but you're probably going to have to change belts in them. I would suggest look for something from the mid to late 90s, something like this that, you know, the belts are going to be less likely to be perished. Um, the very good chance that the reason why I picked this also is it was full of C batteries and they're dated 2018 on them. So that gives me a general indication that, you know, this was used as, you know, probably last decade uh, in the 2020s. Well, the 20 teens, I should say pre-2020 but um so you know that kind of gives me an idea that it's been used and it does work really well and now again you're going to want to go up to them you're going to want to check them out going to want to make sure that you know the mechanism works and all that plug it in if you can and then my biggest thing i'm going to use this as a demonstration oh also pro tip if you do go to the thrift store Put a couple of triple A's and double A's in your pocket just so you can test these things. But what I do is press play on the machine. You obviously want to make sure it's turning. Now, if it's turning, that doesn't mean you're good right off the bat. You want to go ahead and put your finger on there, and you should feel a lot of resistance, you know, a pretty good amount of resistance. It shouldn't take too much to get it to stop, but you shouldn't be able to just barely touch it and it stops. And you can also check the fast forward and rewind on it. And uh, do the same thing, hold it down, check it from there. And, which is going to segue us into uh, the next part. That's going to be, if you're looking for hi-fi, or, excuse me, if you're looking for a more high-end, better quality one, my suggestion to you is check out Facebook, check out eBay. But make sure you look for something that was either refurbished, um, rebelted, recapped stuff like that which is going to cost you a little bit more um also look for a direct drive one there's going to be less things that can go bad in them um that's kind of my ultimate goal and that's kind of what i suggest people do but um yeah if you're just looking for you know a little tape player they're not too hard to find and they're very cheap and 
With all of these I had to do, and with just about everything like I've mentioned 457,000 times, you're going to have to clean out your volume potentiometer. So for this, this is the only thing I'm going to do with this. I'm going to clean the potentiometer and I'm not going to go too much further because I have learned that it's actually very easy to kind of mess uh, these mechanisms up. You might go in there thinking that a belt is loose. When in actuality, a lot of the way that these things work, you know, they have to be a little loose. They can't be too tight. So my suggestion would be if you do the spin test when it's playing, if everything's working all right, I wouldn't mess with the belts or anything. You can just make more problems for yourself. But you are going to have to clean out the potentiometer. So like I said, that's all I'm doing on this one. Um, I don't care about the CD. I don't care about anything else. I just care about the tape and the headphone jack. And let's go ahead and um, really gingerly, really easily, I'm going to pull the back off of this and clean that pot. Show you how to do it. I have a couple other videos showing you how to do it. But uh, for redundancy, we're going to do it again. And I absolutely promise you, I'm not going to make you watch a horrible time lapse with loud music. I'm not going to do that. I wouldn't do that. I'm going to do it. Okay, so this right in there, as you can see, that's the bottom of the potentiometer. And it's kind of hard to see, but you can see there's a little hole there. That's what you want to go ahead and spray your spray into. Um, I only have alcohol, so I'm going to show you how to use alcohol to get kind of the same effect, but it really needs to be blown out. Now I can see where I think this was some guy's uh, fishing radio he took with him fishing or it was on a construction site maybe or something, something that was dirt, somewhere, you know, around somewhere that was dirty. And you can see where all the dirt kind of fell through and uh, it's kind of just congregated right there on that little board that holds the potentiometer. So that's definitely why. I forgot to show you, but I'm sure you would believe me, but you, I wasn't getting any noise or any sound out of the speakers unless if I kind of twisted them around and it's just classic symptoms of a dirty potentiometer so i'm gonna go ahead and do that and uh, kind of taking a look on the inside and uh seems pretty well made not too bad there's the tape deck mechanism down there like i said i'm just gonna blow this out i'm not really gonna mess with any of that because everything looks good so uh minimal touching that uh, as little as possible and i think we're gonna be okay uh the cd player works but I probably won't use it too much. Uh, that little thing with the foil, well, with the uh, kind of metal tabs coming off of it, that's our power amplifier. And it is, uh, I can't remember what it is. Put it down in the comments if you know what it is. Uh, I just can tell you one thing about it that I know, and which will tell you what it is. It's the uh, type where the two pins in the middle, I believe it's a 10-pin DIP, and uh, the two in the middle on each side are the ground. I think it's like a 20 TDA 2822 or something, but which is better than uh, the other little uh, proprietary ICs that are used only primarily for uh, a tape deck with a single speaker. And then they kind of, you know, on them, they would mock stereo or pretend to be stereo by running a mono signal to both uh, left and right channels. But I digress. So I don't know how well you're going to be able to see this, but I like to take these little syringes that they give you for giving your uh, dog's medicine, or they even come for giving kids medicine. That's why we have them. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and just kind of spray some on in there. And then work it around. Work it around a lot until you hit both stops. And then just kind of wash and repeat. You want to go right into that little slot right there. And like I said before, don't worry, it's just alcohol. Uh, you can let it sit for about an hour, or you can blow it out with some, oops, 
with some uh, duster or something like that. I don't even know if it's in frame anymore, sorry, but I think you get the idea. So now another good thing to do, and I'm going to use this to demonstrate so we can see it better, is take a Q-tip, and I'm using 91% isopropyl alcohol, 91 or above, if you can get it above 91, is definitely the best what you want to use. But you want to go ahead and take and put some alcohol on there, and then go ahead and clean up your playhead. Just kind of go around in a circle. There's going to be these little tabs here, try not to pull it on there too much to get the little cotton particles stuck in there. If you want to, you can clean your erase head too. Clean off the capstan, clean off the pinch roller a little bit. You don't want to go too crazy. but And then don't go crazy cleaning in these inside gears and stuff. You don't have to worry about that. These have grease on them, which would be a miracle, you know, if they're still around. So if anything, maybe uh, take some the special type of grease for that. Google it. I don't know what it is. And uh, grease that, if anything. But just figured I'd show you that. All right, so I have it partially put back together. Let's go ahead and see if that helped anything at all. Try this side. Oh, we're not on tape. <laughs> okay. Moment of truth. Volume is down. Looks like it's working good to me. Nice. Success. Well, all right, got it all popped back together. And for the final demo, I've actually got it hooked up to the JVC that I just did a video on and uh, running it through the JBLs. And now this tape is, I believe it's 40 years old or it's over 40 years old, which brings me to another point. And that is uh, how long tapes last. Um, you get a good quality tape. You don't play it a whole lot. And it'll last you a long time. And I remember this tape being played a lot. So I'm really surprised at uh, the quality in it still. So here we go. Obviously can't play too much of that. So there you go, guys. Sorry it was kind of short and uh, kind of sweet there at the end but you know I can't play too much of that I just kind of wanted to show you how old original tapes actually sound and uh, this was definitely a success if you have any questions or comments or concerns go ahead and leave them down in the comments if you feel like it go ahead and subscribe and leave a like maybe a share and uh, we'd really appreciate it but uh, yeah keep coming back for more content we do audio we do auto so not really everything in between so thank you very much, guys. Have a good one.